I'm so glad you joined me today. I'm Pastor John Miller, lead pastor at Church on the Rock, and I've been talking to you from my back porch. I live in Redwater, Texas. I love it out here. It's a little country feel. I, I was raised in the country and I really enjoy it. I've got a pond, I've got a garden, but I, I wanna share with you a little bit today from my heart as I've been doing about how to grow spiritually. It's a pathway for spiritual growth. Spiritual growth's not accidental, but it's very deliberate. And we've been talking about uh, uh, having a daily time with God where every day we, we read our Bibles and we pray. Well, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about today, the third thing, it's about the importance of being involved and in attending a local church. It's about Christian fellowship. Uh, what I'm gonna to do today is I'm just basically gonna make some statements and then I'm gonna read some scriptures that show you the priority of the local church family. And obviously, we wanna to go to the Bible to see what the Bible says about the church. And when the church was born on the day of Pentecost, we see an abiding example. Uh, Acts chapter two, verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, Acts chapter two, verse 42. After this day of Pentecost, there's 3,000 believers. They're being added every day to the church, but they come together as a local church family. And it says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That's the Bible. That's our Bible study, uh, the part of church that's learning the Bible. It's going to small groups where we learn. They devoted themselves to fellowship. That's relationship with other Christians. And in sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. In other words, they, had, they hung out together. They had fun together. They played ball together. They'd go over to one another's house. Uh, uh, they, would, they would pray together. So it's like this spiritual family that really, I would even argue that you can't find New Testament Christianity apart from the local church. And I have been a pastor really probably since 1980. I've been in vocational ministry. Uh, I, I've served the Lord actually since probably 82. And what I have noticed since those years uh, have, uh, as they've unfolded, is the people that tend to be most committed to a local church, uh, it's a priority in their life, their Christian life tends to be more consistent, more deliberate, more effective, and more significant. Now, as I said, the church is a spiritual family. And I'm gonna read some of Paul's instruction now. It's 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse one, and listen to the family terminology. Paul said, never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would your own father. Talk to younger men as you would your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother. And treat younger women with all purity as your own sister. Now, of course, in family, you know, <laughs> families are filled with laughter. Families get upset with each other. Families are not perfect. But you know what? The people that I'm most committed to in this life today it's my wife, my kids, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister. You know, they're family. They're kin by blood. Well, with other Christians, there's also a, a kinship. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ, because of Christ's blood, our sins are forgiven, and we're born again, literally, into a family of believers called the family of God. Now, in the New Testament, the early church, church involvement was not optional for growing Christians. Listen to what Hebrews 10, 25 said. It said, you shouldn't stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Listen, do this even more as you see the day of the Lord's coming. Well, listen, the Bible tells us very clearly that one day Jesus Christ is coming back to the earth. And as we look forward to that day, there's something vital to keep us prepared and on track, and that is that we're meeting with other believers. You know, a lot of people make steps to Christ. Many people have, have received Christ uh, uh, watching someone on television or maybe they've gone to a church, but they never connected. And here's what I want you to see. There's something vital that happens. When you're with other Christian people, you're growing spiritually. There's accountability in your life. You're learning the Bible. You've got people to pray with you. But here's a super big one. When you fall down, there's someone to pick you up. When you struggle, maybe sin pulled you back into the world. If you've got strong Christian brothers and sisters, you've got somebody there to encourage you to keep running the race, to encourage you to keep following Christ, to make you realize that, listen, serving the Lord's going to be worth it one day. And listen, I have been a part of, a, of church families ever since I've made my, my commitment to Christ. Here's another uh, statement. Our best friends should be Christians. Um, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 
It says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? 1 Corinthians 5.33 says, don't be fooled. Bad friends will ruin good habits. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't have a perfect life growing up. Uh, uh, probably three years of my life, 17, 18, and 19, I was a very worldly person, which simply means I didn't live a Christian life. Uh, I did things that were displeasing to God. And you know why I started? I did them because my friends were doing them. It's kind of monkey see, monkey do. And I remember it was my, it was uh, when I was in high school, I was in the ninth grade and I was playing ball in a, uh, uh, it was a district championship and I was the second baseman. But we didn't ride the bus back then, we rode cars to the game. And I was in the car with a group of seniors. Well, you know what? After the game, it was their last game, they stopped by the beer store. And before I knew it, because I wanted to fit in, they put a beer in my hand. Well, my grandfather was an alcoholic, and I saw what it did firsthand. And I didn't want to drink it, but I wanted to fit in. And they would drink, and they'd throw their cans out the window, and I'd kind of fake like I was drinking, and I'd throw mine out. I, listen, it's not something I ever want to go back to, but here's my point. People will pull you into the world, and you'll do what your friends do. But you know what? When I started serving the Lord, I found that Christian people uh, were, were, were there for me. I, I, I walked with them. They encouraged me in my character. They encouraged me to grow spiritually. And I listen, we need to be friends with everybody. I, I, I don't believe we want to be uppity. I don't believe we want to be self-righteous and talk down to people. Listen, Jesus, the Bible says, he hung out with sinners and tax collectors. In other words, he accepted people. He was with people that were right there in the midst of the world, that were entrapped by the worldly ways and sin. But you know what? His closest associates were his fellow disciples. And that's the one that he shared life with. So that's why I encourage you, let your best friends be Christian. And lastly... God wants us to use our gifts, our talents, our abilities, and our resources to serve in local churches together. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you has received a gift to serve others and be a servant of God's various gifts of grace. Listen, God has given you an ability and you can find an expression for that ability in the local church. It could be working with kids. It could be working with teenagers. It could be leading a life group in someone's home, being an usher. I mean, the list is long. You may even want to start a golf scramble and encourage people to come, have a prayer, quick devotion before you go out and play on the back nine. You know, serving the Lord together, using your gifts, it makes a difference. I am a huge proponent of the local church, and I hope you'll be a part. I hope you'll be involved in weekend services, I hope you'll find a life group to attend. Uh, I hope you'll find a place to serve the Lord because if you do those things, you will grow spiritually and that's what it's all about. Listen, next time we're gonna talk about how to grow spiritually, part four, and we'll talk about water baptism. I hope I'll see you then.